back. Uh, Joe, did you have anything you wanted to finish up about the Common Core or anything about that? It's just very insidious, and it's really the driving force behind so many of these stealth programs to invade every aspect of our lives and our children's lives. And, you know, with the implantable microchip RFID technology that's there, uh, they're really slickly packaging this uh, to make it palatable to these uh, the unsuspecting parents. It's really a tragedy. Now, now they can, we, we covered a lot with the microchips back probably a year ago on this show. And, uh, and, the, and there's so many ways they can do this. They can actually, you, you can actually uh, swallow them and they get stuck in your stomach or intestine. And, and I know somebody locally here, uh, a child in a, in a local town that their parents were trying to get them to take this microchip and uh, apparently the grandparents found out and squashed the whole idea, but, but it's going on here, guys. It, it appears it's being deployed, um, and it's definitely in, it's in the new FDA Act. Um, any, anyone in 2014 that's receiving essentially any kind of public assistance will be mandatory uh, RFID chip. And, um, but, but I think that gets a little bit of away from the topic tonight, which is Wi-Fi exactly. uh, in schools. And uh, I don't know how much background you did with Joe, but maybe Joe could just kind of tell us how he came to um, came to be aware that there's there is a problem with Wi-Fi in schools. All right, listen, guys. This is what we're going to do. It's already 20 after. I'm going to let you guys talk back and forth. The viewers are going to listen, and uh, that way we don't we don't get disrupted. Because I know there's a lot you want to get out, and and we and this show goes quick. So okay. feel feel free, Joe, to have at it, and then uh, okay. Sean ch chime in with them. Sean, I already went over how I came I came to this position, so you can go ahead okay. and pick up uh, wherever you okay. were. Well. Possibly, maybe I'll just explain my background. And uh, traditionally, I, I've been a physical injury and, and recently a medical malpractice attorney. Um, and then a subset of that, a few years ago, um, we worked with the Oregon Brain Injury Association. And one of the uh, 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 gentlemen by the name of David Morrison, uh, he came to us and wanted our firm to represent them it, to get Wi-Fi out of schools because uh, he, he became aware that there was a problem. And the firm I was working for wouldn't take it. It was too political for them. But I decided to take the case on myself and um, devoted well over 4,000 hours now to the subject and got the opportunity to work with some of the world's top scientists um, from epidemiology to uh, okay, Sean, you still there? Joe? Yes. Hey, it, 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 we lost Sean. Uh, I'm not surprised with this. I, I've we've had plenty of issues with technology trying trying to do the show. It just and when I burn DVDs for the show and and, and videos and it, it's it's a common harassment, electronic harassment. So I'm not I'm not a bit surprised. But Joe, if you want to finish. Uh, uh, Talking about about the Wi-Fi in the schools, that would be great. Sure. Well, you know, the, the Wi-Fi provides the uh, the base station of energy transmission uh, that does a lot of things. It, it does two-way communication with these devices. It uh, also provides the energy necessary uh, to power these chips if they end up in the kids. Uh, but what it also does is it exposes the children to levels of microwave radiation that are literally trillions of times the normal background levels that our parents were exposed to uh, as children. And that has 
ramifications that are totally being ignored by current exposure guidelines. The FCC guidelines only look at thermal or heating of tissue effects. And those guidelines were established years ago by exposing a military infantry soldier sized mannequin to uh, heating uh, of the head area. And the only thing that were, was looked at was the increase of temperature inside the cup of salt water inside this mannequin's head. They completely ignored non-thermal biological interactions. These waves contain energy, electromagnetic energy. If you use a remote control car, it can tell the car what to do, turn left, turn right, go straight, or stop. That car is operating on a non-thermal mechanism. It is an electromagnetic interaction between the controller and the receiver. Our bodies are electrical beings. Most, if not all, of our functions are governed by electromagnetic interactions at the cellular level and even at the molecular level. So to say that these emissions have absolutely no impact on physiology is completely ludicrous. And so what we're seeing now is a massive rise in ADHD, mental illness, autism, and even infertility. And so these are the fruits of the labor of the proliferation of this technology. Now, now you have children, correct? Yes. Uh, now, the schools that they attend, are they do the schools have Wi-Fi still? Oh, yes. Yeah. My children were removed when the uh, wireless access points uh, began to be upgraded and the iPad rollout began. I removed the children uh, from that environment to protect them. Uh, my uh, fifth grade son, <clears throat> excuse me, had uh, repeated nosebleeds. He would have headaches, upset stomach. Um, and, uh, he never had that stuff unless he was ill or unless he was punched in the face on accident playing with his brother or something. I mean, nosebleeds are not something that happened normally. He would come home with nosebleeds almost every day. Um, so, you know, that went on for a couple of weeks, and then we had the school move him to another room that doesn't have a router in it. And then uh, that room ended up getting a router put in, and then they started using iPads. Uh, and within about two weeks, we had removed him from the school along with my two daughters. Uh, so my children are no longer being subjected to these emissions, but the concern is, is there's another 15,000 kids just in my town alone that are. Okay. Now, now I believe Sean is with us at the moment, correct, uh, Sean? I'm back, and I, I'm trying a different phone. Hopefully this will be better. <laughs> okay. Well, the aliens are getting you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling from a remote location, that's for sure. That's right. Uh, well, I, I, I guess what I would just say is that my involvement also became whenever a client came to me wanting to get Wi-Fi out of tools, and that was in Portland, Oregon. Uh, the, all of our filings in that case are available at www.wirelesswatchblog.org and also at thermoguy.com and uh, mazdahavas.com. And I'll explain who those people are here in a minute. Um, and after that, I got involved with electromagnetic uh, uh, fields and their effect on, on, on people. And um, I have had the chance to work with uh, some of the world's top experts. And the, what, what, I, what I came to learn was that human beings are electrical beings. And we have to think of humans, and especially children, as electrical beings. And children, are even are far more sensitive and vulnerable to the radiation due to their, the size of their bodies and the fact that their bodies are still developing. Uh, the myelian sheath that's in, that, that coats the nerves takes over 20 years to develop. Um, their bones are still growing into their 20s. Uh, during, during this time, uh, they, there's a lot of uh, DNA um, creation going on, and, and the radiation causes DNA breaks, and that's been proven by uh, Professor Henry Lai from the University of Washington over 10 years ago. Uh, this type of radiation causes double and single-strand breaks in the DNA. 
going going re more recent time, I, I happen to work with uh, Curtis Bennett, who is an electrician in, and and specializes in thermal imaging up in Canada. And his website again is thermoguy.com. And he explained to me that the Wi-Fi router or the cell tower. Uh, emits radiation, and you know the, the cell, cellular companies want you to think, well, it's just radio frequency radiation. Uh, it's just it's just TV waves. But radiation is radiation is radiation, and it doesn't matter what kind of uh, form it comes in. It's just a matter of uh, power density or how, how 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 much power you're getting and the frequency, because the different frequencies, uh, the bandwidth of the radiation. Uh, makes a difference on how, how your body reacts to it. And right now, I believe that the uh, extremely low frequency background noise is a million times above what the natural background. And that has uh, essentially uh, gone from nothing in about 1940s when they began using radar to where it is now, a million times above the background. And that's extremely low frequency. That's not even including extremely high frequency, which is what um, Wi-Fi operates at in cell towers. Uh, another thing I would like to point out is that cell towers emit the same type of radiation that, that a cell phone does, that a white iPad does, that a, a router in a, in a school does. Now, what we did in the uh, Morrison uh, Portland Public Schools case, we went in and, uh, with the help of Lloyd Morgan, who is a, um, a brain tumor epidemiologist and uh, electrical engineer, he went in and took measurements. Um, and what we found was that measurements near the routers where the kids would pick up their, their uh, laptops was 50 times higher than if we took the measurements standing uh, across the street from a cell tower. So the point is, is would, would, would you feel safe living next to a cell tower? Would you put a cell tower in your children's house, in, your, in their bedroom? You know, why would you give them one, uh, you know, uh, why, would you, why would you do this if, 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 if you knew what they were? And no one would put a cell tower on their property. Uh, in fact, there was a recent case where a cell tower was built and the people won a million dollars because the, the property was deemed not, not usable anymore. And uh, that was a recent decision. But uh, going back uh, to, to the, what, what we found in the schools is that the radiation coming off the router is over 50, can be as high as 50 times higher than standing across the street from a cell tower. Now, it, there's, there was a study called the Vatican Radio Study, and they had, uh, back in the day, there was only one cell tower per town. And this cell tower was located on um, Vatican property, and I, I believe it was on Vatican property, but it was a, a study by the Vatican. And uh, what they found was people living within a mile of the cell tower had High, extremely high increase rates of cancer, and it was a direct correlation between the distance they were from the transmitter to the correlation of, of cancer incidence. So the, the question begs, you know, when people realize that the, the radiation coming out of their, their kid's iPad, out of these routers, is the same type of radiation, and quite frankly, higher in, in, in power uh, density because of the distance that you are to the device. An iPad, the children are literally uh, grounding themselves and, and holding it on, on their body. Uh, so they're getting extremely high amounts of radiation. 